Good afternoon, listeners. Welcome back to the Free Marketeers podcast. You're listening to Chris Hutting, researcher at the Free Market Foundation. You're joining me today for a very special episode of the podcast. Um, as you might be aware, we're hosting a very special event at the Free Market Foundation this week. It's the Economic Freedom of the World Audit of the South African economy and the South African government in general. And my guest today is Fred McMahon from the Fraser Institute in Canada, uh, a partner of the of the Free Market Foundation. And uh, Fred is the spearhead. Uh, I, I'm, maybe I'm giving him too much credit here, but he's the spearhead behind the EFW report. Fred, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. And of course, I believe you can never give me too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how the questions go. And then we decide from there what I should edit and take out or not. <laughs> So just a few questions, listeners. Um, this is also just to give you a basic overview of what the EFW is. I'm sure that you see every year we publish um, the South African version with the South African intro. Uh, you might wonder what all these numbers are about. For those of you who are afraid of maths and economics, all these numbers might look a bit intimidating. For me as well, I'm a philosopher, so I'm scared of, of all these numbers being thrown at me. But that's part of this episode. We're just going to talk about a few basic things and hopefully help broaden all our understandings on the report and why it's important for South Africa. So Fred, just the first question, a basic overview of your work at the, at, at the Fraser Institute, your background, uh, your role there, and then what the Institute does in general. Uh, I manage the uh, economic freedom work of the uh, Fraser Institute uh, and uh, thus manage uh, four separate annual publications, The Economic Freedom of the World, which long preceded my time and is now one of the most prestigious and important publications in the world. Uh, I also manage The uh, Economic Freedom of North America, where I'm one of the uh, co-authors and the principal designer uh, of the index. What it does is it looks at economic freedom levels in subnational jurisdictions in Canada, the United States and Mexico. It is quite revealing uh, <laughs> on what it shows. Uh, I also co-author uh, with Salomel Ishmale, Azan al and Miguel uh, Cervantes, The Economic Freedom of the Arab World, which is getting in increasing traction okay. in, the, in the Arab world. It compares the level of economic freedom amongst Arab states. The World Project does the uh, same, but we're specifically tuned to data available for Arab states, so we're able to uh, include more of them. And finally, and very importantly, uh, the Human Freedom mm -hmm. uh, Index. I'm the editor of the overall project, which is a joint project of Fraser, the Cato Institute in the United States and the Friedrich Naumann Foundation in Germany. Mm -hmm. There have been indexes that measure economic freedom, obviously, and indexes that measure other sorts of freedom. Uh, but no one until this project has put it together to get an overall uh, view of human freedom. Um, so those that's so those are the projects that I manage. Okay, excellent. It sounds like you're quite a busy man, <laughs> keeping you out of trouble. <laughs> Okay, and then specifically on the uh, the EFW, the Economic Freedom of the World Report. South Africa, I think in 2018, we ranked 110th out of 162 countries, if I'm not mistaken. So, and, and the trend is very much downward. Uh, we keep sliding down in the, in the index uh, for a whole host of reasons. Um, just on in your view, why is the report so important, especially for countries such as South Africa? If we, you know, you know, the the talk is around developing the developing world countries such as South Africa, India, China, Brazil. Why would this report be you know, good for South Africans to be aware of, of, of the different scores? The Economic Freedom Index, as it says, measures economic freedom, the ability of individuals and families to make their own economic uh, decisions free of interference by uh, overly powerful government or greedy crony elites. Mm -hmm. And crony capitalism is not free no. uh, markets, it's not even uh, capitalism. Uh, Douglas North calls this, uh, Nobel laureate Douglas North calls it the best available measure of efficient markets. We call it economic freedom because that's the way it affects the individual, right. their economic freedom. But in effect, if all individuals in a society of economic freedom, then you have free markets. Okay. So it's yeah. also a, uh, a measure of free markets. And anyone who looks around the world will quickly discover, I mean, it's quite incredible. Uh, when people criticize 
uh, free uh, markets mm. and attribute all sorts of evil to them mm -hmm. because they believe that with one part of their mind. Right. But in the fact-based part of their mind, they know that uh, actually that isn't true, and they never bring their knowledge together with their ideology. Right. When you look around the world, it is unambiguously true mm -hmm. that uh, it is the free market nations, mm -hmm. the nations that rate highest in our index, yeah. for that matter, that bring the greatest quality of life uh, to people. That includes the European states, who mm -hmm. all have a high level of free markets. People sometimes try to claim incorrectly that the Scandinavian states are somehow socialist. <laughs> they course. aren't. They are free market in every single way. They have large governments. Uh, but they are free traders, which would horrify some left wingers. They have <laughs> and if you're right wingers, <laughs> as true, uh, and uh, uh, they have business uh, friendly regulations, which again would horrify a lot of left wingers. Yeah. Uh, they uh, are open. They their labor markets are easy and flexible. They don't have the kind of restrictions South Africa uh, has. Mm -hmm. They have a solid. Uh, an impartial rule of law. These are deeply free market yeah. uh, nations. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, North America, uh, high levels of well being. Mm -hmm. In Asia, the highest levels of well being are in free market economies like Singapore, which was once a uh, a devastated swamp yeah. after the end of the yeah. Second World War. Taiwan, despite its problems mm -hmm. uh, uh, with, uh, with China in mm -hmm. South America, Chile, the most free market country, has now the highest standard of living mm -hmm. in all of Latin uh, America. Yeah. Used to be Argentina, then Argentina went towards populism mm -hmm. and away from free markets. Mm -hmm. So everybody has in the back of their minds, yeah. in the fact based part of their minds, the knowledge that uh, it is the free market societies that succeed mm. uh, and it is the societies that lack free markets. Zimbabwe obviously, increasingly, right. uh, South Africa, uh, me most of the Arab uh, states, clearly disasters like uh, Venezuela, mm -hmm. North Korea, uh, but places that are also less economically uh, free without being disasters. Mm -hmm. You'd much rather live in South Korea than the Philippines. Right. Uh, you'd much rather live in uh, Taiwan than in uh, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. um, and again, people know this, but somehow mm -hmm. ideology uh, overturns uh, uh, what they actually know. It's like, are you going to believe your lying eyes? Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> And it's important, therefore, to have a measure of what makes a society economically mm. free, uh, which provides a guide to other nations, nations yeah. that actually want to improve the welfare of their system, a guide to the policies mm. that work. Yeah, on that on that point about you brought up different examples of countries around the world, you know, which are more free, more prosperous, those which go the other way. And I'm throwing this curveball at you and listeners, so you know, as well, you know, you might think this is all biased and prepared beforehand. I did give Fred some questions, but this one I'm sort of just throwing in now. There's a, often a, 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 a line of thinking that only free markets, capitalism, these things are Eurocentric Western things that only work in those areas. But as the data shows, I mean, it's, it's the birthright of all of humanity in a way to be free and then to be prosperous. Uh, it's not that it just works, you know, in America. Uh, the market village, yeah. entrepreneurial farmers and craftspeople bringing uh, their products uh, to the on, uh, to to the village market. Mm -hmm. That's as old as humanity. Uh, uh, oh, unfortunately, what then happens yeah. is the big man or the powerful uh, or a powerful clique yeah. come in and dominate the village market and make it no longer mm -hmm. uh, free and yeah. start in effect stealing things uh, from the merchants and right. the uh, producers. So economic freedom, free markets mm -hmm. are intrinsic uh, to humankind. Mm -hmm. The restrictions of, on them are uh, a disease that creates uh, a disease that uh, creates uh, misery, yeah. and it is important to note, as you did, uh, that free market societies work wherever they are. Mm -hmm. 
work in North America, Canada. Mm -hmm. They work in Europe, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they also work in South America, in Chile, which yeah. is now very prosperous. Mm -hmm. They clearly work in Asia, yeah. uh, Japan, Taiwan, mm. South Korea, Singapore, Hong Kong, all of which rose from mm -hmm. desperately bad uh, situations. Yeah. And in Africa, uh, Botswana is a leading example of a free market nation. In fact, uh, since about 1960, 1970, and this will shock people, yeah. Botswana, which has been consistently the most economically free nation in, uh, in Africa, mm -hmm. has about the same growth rate as the Asian tigers, about the same growth rate as Singapore, about the same growth rate uh, as Hong Kong, mm -hmm. a better growth rate uh, than South Korea, mm -hmm. uh, and about tied again with Taiwan. Yeah. So, Africa has an African tiger to right. match the uh, Asian tiger. So yeah. it works in Africa, works in Asia, works in uh, 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 Central, uh, is, works in Latin America. Uh, uh, I'm not sure whether it would work in Antarctica. I don't know <laughs> how free market penguins are. But well, to your credit, it. you're being unbiased and objective. So. <laughs> That's but, a good thought experiment. But at least do. wherever humans naturally live, it has worked. Okay, good. And then just a final question um, from our from the FMF side. We're trying to always plug all the holes as you would in a dam wall, trying to um, convince government to always change policies and everything that they do. Um, and as you know, as you're obviously aware, and some listeners might be, there are five areas of the economic freedom index. So, if I could just narrow your focus to one, if there was one, uh, you know, in South African terms, one one area of the EFW which you would recommend the government look at. Um, we we know the term low hanging fruit is thrown around. What would be the easiest thing for them to improve their score on? Uh, well, the easiest thing is not the most important okay. thing. Uh, the easiest thing uh, is uh, restraining government, reforming uh, taxes, mm -hmm. uh, um, um, uh, selling off uh, government enterprises. I mean, your electrical generator is a disaster. Yeah. Uh, South Africa Airways, once one of the most prestigious airways of the globe, is a disaster. It was mm -hmm. used as a piggy bank by yeah. a corrupt... Uh, uh, regime. I know there's political opposition to mm -hmm. these things, um, but those would be easy to do. Parliament can do them in effect overnight. Okay. Uh, lots of examples of privatization around the world, mm. uh, which has increased expertise. The first privatization, some of them didn't go so well. Sure. It's now much better known the uh, procedures to follow, mm. or at least partial privatization. Right, so, yeah bits of them or, or, or whatever. So that's easy. Okay. Uh, and it would improve the quality of life in South Africa. The most important is also the hardest. <laughs> uh, Isn't that always the case? <laughs> yes. And that is improving the rule of law. Now, okay. South Africa is in an extraordinarily fortunate position. Uh, South Africa has had uh, a well-functioning uh, rule of law. Mm -hmm. uh, it is slowly deteriorating. Yeah. Uh, the Zuma regime did everything it could to mm -hmm. uh, to cause its uh, further deterioration. Yeah. But because you start with a solid basis, you don't face uh, the horrible challenges that many nations do mm -hmm. that basically have to build from scratch. Right. No society except maybe petro states have ever become wealthy without uh, an impartial uh, and firm rule of law. Mm -hmm. And I stress impartial. Mm -hmm. uh, w when the rule of law gets politicized, mm -hmm. it's the uh, rich and powerful yeah. that gain and it's the weak and poor that lose. Mm -hmm. It is essential that you have a rule of law that treats the rich and the poor, the powerful and the weak, mm -hmm. all equally and impartially according to what the law says. That is the most important thing. So Africa is in danger of losing that. Mm -hmm. uh, th that is the keystone to a better life for mm -hmm. South Africans. Well, there you have it, listeners, straight from the 
horse's mouth um, we can arrest the slide but only if we take the the hard medicine now mm -hmm. and uh, institute the necessary sort of safeguards and reforms uh, fred i want to thank you very much listeners i hope you uh, found it informative please leave your comments below please share the podcast uh, wherever you are on facebook twitter uh, and everywhere else um, fred where can people find your work uh, all the Fraser Institute work is available for free download, including the data in convenient forms uh, for those who want to do their own research at FraserInstitute.org, all one word Fraser Institute, and it's spelled F-R-A-S-E-R. And then listeners, one final note, if you'd like to follow any of the sessions from either today or tomorrow or Friday from our EFW audit event, Please find those on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. We'll upload them in the evenings after the, all the talks are completed. Thank you once again for joining us and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye.